Not much. What's up with you? <laughs> I can't believe I just spoke. What's so funny? What do you guys have to Um, is it just me? Or does it smell like up dog in here? What's up dog? Nothing much. What's up with you? <laughs> That's so good. I just got so great. Hey Christian, does that baby smell like up dog? Go away, I'm working on my film. Hey Lainey, what's your film about? Up dog? What's that? And nothing much. What's up with you? Huh? What's that? What? It's what? What you just said. Just forget it. Oh, Alex! Is it just me, or does it smell like up dog in here? What's up dog? <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> what? Um, nothing. What's up with you? So close. <laughs>
for the job that was weird for a children's book man. But Ted thought, if he can do it, then I definitely can. You start tomorrow with Jordan the Jail Warden. Meet tomorrow at 8 at the Hesha Lizzie Borden. Now the year before, something bad had happened there. And just to think about it just gives me a scare. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. A terrible crime that ended in murder. Lizzie Borden was free, said Judge Yertle, the court order. Seuss was in shock, for he heard of the crime. I want you to take notes on a scene this time. So Seuss thanked Goliath and nodded his head. He then went on home and soon climbed into bed. The next morning, he woke up mighty quick and mighty fast, for his new job had started this morning at last. He grabbed his notebook and went straight to his work. If anyone saw this, they'd think him berserk. Soon he arrived at the house of Lizzie Borden, when he met Official Jordan, the cheerful jail warden. What you'll see here is scary, Jordan had said, for the people inside are one year dead. Seuss opened the door and went straight to his work. When he saw what was inside, he turned with a jerk. I can't do this, Seuss had said in his head. Should I be the one investigating the dead? Now Seuss soon took note that the people he saw were shriveled and wrinkled and bloody and raw. Up to the bedroom of Abby Borden they went, where her body had odor, a rather grave scent. He wrote all this down and took note of the weapon, which made him feel sick and he lost all expression. Maybe, he thought, this job's not for me, for knowing the person who did this was free. After about one hour inside of the crime scene, Seuss pondered upon the things he had seen. Back at the station, Jordan and Ted discussed, As you saw, what Lizzie did was very unjust. Jordan took Seuss's notes and began to read them, but the notes that Jordan read was utter mayhem. It read, The Borden house was rather a mess. I can't unsee it. It causes me stress. The bodies were whacked with a weapon of sorts, which in this case I'll call a hatchet misplorts. The bodies were wrecked and it was clear to me that the murder of Andrew and Abby was of first degree. Inside his notes, Seuss wrote like a kid, and Jordan the Warden was mad that he did. This is not right, Jordan said loudly. You seem to write notes and rhymes very proudly. He looked at Seuss, saying, This job's not for you. Go back to writing of thing one and thing two. And so that's the story of Seuss and his work, which ended quite weirdly and oddly preserved. The moral is, if there's something which you do good, stick with it and you'll see why you should. We've come to the end of this Seussian story, one that was funny and blissful, but gory. So, so long, good night, and I bid you adieu, for I'll see you all soon in Sala Salu. Hi, I'm Maddie Line. And I'm Alex Elko. And, and you're, you're watching Disney Channel. Channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Big Deal is a mock Disney original teaser on a hit new show by Caitlin Burns and Virginia Keister. Mia is in an odd situation whenever she touches water. Her friend Allegra is the only one who knows her secret when Mia tries to get through high school. I'm Bella Thor from my Shake It Up. And you're watching Disney Channel. I can't believe it's the first day of school here. I can't go through high school. It's going to be pretty hard for you since you still have a crush on Chad and Montgomery. Oh my god, he's so funny. Oh my gosh, she got water on her. Yeah. Mia? Mia, you have to be careful at school. Calm down, no one saw me. It's not a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal When water touches me, uh, you should really see uh, She turns into a pickle, wish it didn't have to be a big deal It's a big deal It's a secret that nobody knows It's a big deal It's a big deal It's a big deal It's a big deal I'm in quite the pickle In Ian Argo's The Ballad of Mr. Bones, 
Three brave souls investigate the murder of Mr. Bones and find more than they bargained for. <laughs> it was not uncommon to see bodies in the streets of Rotridge, Tennessee. Outlaws, ne'er-do-wells, and gunslingers often came through with a bone to pick for some poor lad barely laid down from his swaddle. This man was different. Not before the little hand struck three, he lied dead in the streets, his blood long congealed in his boots, his flesh and sinew pierced by some unknown force yet unearthed. Nothing more a pile of bones before investigators arrived. These three brave souls seek justice for this cadaver once wronged. This man is dead. Not to worry guys, I'm a doctor. It appears to be a gunshot wound. Multiple. Where'd you get your medical license? The medical license store? <laughs> Not to worry guys. I run a corner business on the side. Let's see here. He appears to have a fracture of the right radius. And the body is still warm. The killer must still be among us. We should split up and look for clues. I found a smaller dead guy. Who cares, you fool? We have a veritable murder case on our hands. Look, Deputy, a witness. Sir, what can you tell us about the murder? You cannot be serious, Sheriff. The witness has been shot! <laughs> you idiot! That's the victim! <laughs> I think I found a clue. It was near the scene of the murder. You fool! He was shot, not bludgeoned to death with the back end of a pistol! <laughs> Try again. That's fine. I dropped that. Oh. My bad. <laughs> Jared, you're gonna wanna check this out. What is this? I don't know. Do you know what this could mean, Sheriff? They filmed the murder. <laughs> this. It's empty. But that means... Perfect fit. I knew it. You're a CD thief. I knew it. I have a PhD in murder, and I'm practicing. Just, just do a jump cut. No. Why would you shoot Sheriff Brian? <laughs> I shot the sheriff, but I'm not going to shoot the deputy. Why do we all have to wear these ridiculous t In our next film, Sarah Frost has a big secret and doesn't want Maddie Long to find out. Here's The Room by Sarah Frost. Me too. I'm so excited for your film idea. It would be good if I had one, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Thanks. Hey, do you want to go upstairs and, uh, write some ideas down? I just have to pee really quick. Okay. Oh, and don't go in my room. It's really, really messy. Okay.
to eat. You know you're not supposed to eat dairy, silly. Oh, I'm so bored. dirty in here. It's literally spotless. Oh, this is so cute. Whew! You do not want to go in there. I'm happy to remind me next time to not eat dairy. Oh my goodness. What are you doing? Bob Ross, really? I told you not to come in here! <laughs> job and begs her boss to let her stay, all while explaining how she's a model employee. Here's Workplace Madness by Regan Clark and Keely Swain. Regan, come into my office please. Okay. You're fired. What? I've received many complaints about your behavior in the office. Did Walter tell you that? Well, I'd just like to point out Re that I am- <sighs> Nobody here likes you. Excuse me? I'm plenty likable. Just last week I helped Marie fix the copy machine. I don't think- I'm qualified, Marie! Okay. Not my best moment. But I was having a bad day. I'm usually a nice person. Walter, did you use my coffee mug? Uh, no. Damn it, Walter! Yes, such a nice person. I'm offended. <sighs> Regan, give me three good reasons why I shouldn't fire you. I always follow safety protocol. CPR. <clears throat> I'll save you! Don't worry, I'm trained in I, I can't keep defending you, Regan. I expect your letter of resignation on my desk tomorrow. You know what? You just hate that I'm a model employee. That's it. You think that I'll replace you. Wait, 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 wait. <sighs> Regan, no. No, 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 Regan. No, 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 no. We need security in here, stat! You jerk! I've been working at this stupid firm for 10 years! This is treason, treachery, never in my 16 years! Walter! Cancel my 2 o'clock. I'm leaving early. Whoa. In Sabrina Rubenstein's Flash Court, a dad reflects on his time as a varsity tennis player in the 1980s and decides to give the sport a second chance. Dad? What you got? What's this? Oh wow. Holy smokes. I totally forgot this. What is it? Did you play tennis? I did. I did. And I was actually really good. Really? Yeah. As a no matter of fact, I got this prize. I forgot all about this. I was the, the captain of the, the boys' tennis team. I was a varsity captain. Wow. You forgot about being the varsity captain? What well, happened? I was actually really good. I was playing at a level that my coaches thought I can go pro. 
And then I was playing against a competitor that was so strong. His name was Juan McLemore. And I wound up falling and getting injured and never came back from those injuries. And I just never picked up a racket ever again. I think we can change that. I'm ready for battle. Dad, this is tennis practice. Not track practice from 1992. 1992? Try 1982. Let's go. You can never know what it's like. Dad, you're horrible. I thought you said you were a pro. What are you talking about? I didn't say I was a pro. I said I was on the varsity tennis team. I was the captain. When? Well, four years ago. Yeah, and how good were you guys? Well, we came in fourth. Out of how many teams? Three. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, this is David. Well, yeah. I, I just left the tennis courts. I was playing with my daughter. What's that? Where are you, coach? The U.S. Senior League. Like, how senior? I'm oh, senior citizens. Oh, okay. Really? Um, well, I'm really not a senior citizen. I'm only 56. But if you think I can play in your league, then sure, why not? Will I get an AARP discount? All right, cool. All right, we'll have an early bird dinner at 3 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. Sounds good. Bye. Who is that? I'm going to Mike. I might play on the senior citizen U.S. team. I think we're going to Tokyo. <laughs> Woo! USA! 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 <laughs> Can't work like this. <laughs> Never, Never give, give up, up on, on your dreams! dreams. Good evening, and the award for Best Comedy Film goes to The Room, directed by Sarah Frost. Congratulations, Frosty. Have a great night. Category that we have are the drama oh, films. Yes. When the happy couple gets married, they, they aren't prepared for what's in store for their relationship. Here's Happy Wife, Happy Life by Virginia Keister and Caitlin Burns.
In Suspicious Burgers by Jack Skaggs, we see a family reminisce over their dog. Good, me neither. All right, good night. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, if you upload a video and it airs on the show, we'll send you an AFB t-shirt. So good night, everybody. And remember, send your video to me. Get yourself on TV. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. In this next film by Lainey Sumner, three adventurers stumble across a diamond in an unexpected way. The problem is, there's only one diamond and three to reap the rewards. Who will get the diamond to be victorious and who will lose this fierce battle? Here's the diamond.
Burgoyne's Pablo, the previously purple gangster, but he's still purple. We meet a gang leader named Pablo, who feels like something is missing in his life, until one day he sees her, Eguina. Okay kids, let's talk about colors. Ah! <laughs> Let's talk about colors. This is Rebecca. She is red, warm and fiery and sick in the head. This is Betty. She is blue, clumsy and stupid and doesn't have a clue. My name is Pablo, purple as can be. Put them together, they make me. My name is Pablo. I am reformed, not your favorite gangster anymore. <laughs> Who's she? Hey, shoddy. It's poppin'. I am not shoddy. I'm hard boiled. Wouldn't it be nice if we were older? That we wouldn't have to wait so long. And wouldn't it be nice to live? What is this, Pablo? We thought you were better than that. You should be ashamed of yourself. Pablo, who are these people? They're part of my gang. Gang? Pablo, you never told me this. How could you keep this part of you hidden to me? Pablo, I'm leaving you. How could you do this to me? I'm out of here. Mistakes get made, that's alright, that's okay You can think that you're in love when you're really just engaged I hate seeing you like this, Pablo I made a mistake, I shouldn't have judged you for what you did back then More for the person you are today And I love that person, Pablo, I love you I love you too Back in the past, I was bad And that made me really mad But now I'm not that way And we won't be sad today. A girl named Olivia finally gets the courage to break up with her toxic boyfriend and faces repercussions from his friends and family who refuse to see her perspective. Here's Toxic by Medilon. Damn, babe. You've been a lot today. I thought you wanted to lose some weight to fit in your prom dress. You know what? I've had enough of this. We're done. Where did this come from? You can't dump me. I've dealt with this behavior for far too long. You manipulate me. You are always badgering me about my weight and pressuring me into things that I don't want to do. I'm clearly not what you want, and this isn't build a girlfriend where you can just change me into what you want me to be. You don't mean any of this. You're gonna come crawling back to me. No, I'm leaving. Yeah, okay. You're gonna stay right here with me, and you're gonna be okay. Goodbye. Fine, we're done. Leave then. People won't stop sending me mean messages after I broke up with Levi. I can't even respond to any of them. They'll never understand. Those people are stupid. If they don't understand, it's on them. There's two sides to every story, and they only heard his. I know. It's so unfair. He's not going to be showing them all of the screenshots of the rude and condescending things that he said to me, because he can do no wrong, ever. You don't deserve that. But, kind of, kind of glad you broke up with. Yeah, me too. What the hell? I, I, I thought, sorry. I thought I could trust you. Y you can't, you can't. Clearly not anymore.
The award for best drama goes to Happy Wife, Happy Life by Virginia Keister and Caitlin Burns. Now on to a genre bound to scare you right out of your pants. Horror. <gasps> a found footage film about an aspiring vlogger and her reluctant camera person venturing into Fort Weatherall and encountering something unexpected. Here's Nathan Neary's Weatherall. Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are exploring this abandoned military fort from World War II. As you can see, it's covered in lovely graffiti. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of content on the horizons. Legend says there are ghosts here, maybe some murderers, who knows? Let's have some fun, boys. We're going to pick up when we find something cool to shoot. Alright guys, so we found a really more like a we found a more abandoned place that we could that could be cool to explore. There's a bunch of graffiti, but there's like no one here, so we should probably be able to like take off our mask and no one should care. So like let's go. Okay. So we have more terrain to explore, including nasty graffiti, including beer bottles, cigarettes. It slurs! Don't go in there. I don't want to get demonetized. We should go in there. No, we shouldn't. We should go in there. We don't need to go in there. We should go in there. I feel like it's a bad idea. We'll cut the camera and we'll discuss it. Hi guys, we're back after a quick discussion and we've decided content is better than safety and feelings. Come on. I guess. We're the Scooby-Doo gang. Can you get everything? Yes, yeah, so far. Is the red light working? Yes. Beautiful. I'll let you know if it's not. Hey, it's my name. It's spelled wrong. It's the peasant way to spell it. It's Kylie with a lay. Gotta remember that. Moving on. That's quite interesting. Kylie, I don't feel comfortable being in here. Cry about it. Hey, hey look, it's where your Jason can stand when he comes to kill you. It's not funny. It's funny to me. And here's where Freddy Cougar can stand. Oh, wait, I think there's a window. Go, go first, get a good shot. Okay. Is there anything in there that's worthwhile? I'm sorry, what? Get down. Turn off the light, turn off the light, turn off the light. I don't know. Are you still recording? Yeah, I'm still recording. Turn the light on again. Okay. And look up. Okay. This is not the content I signed up for. Yeah, turn up, turn on the light and peek. Okay. Is he still there? This is not the content I signed up for. Shh. I don't see you him. You really are the dumb people that die in horror movies. I don't see him anywhere. All right. If that's so, we gotta like stay here, reverse psychology him. What is that noise? I vote we fight him. Content. No. It'll be like WWE in our backyard. No, we need to run. We need to run, Kylie. 
I don't want us to get killed or something. If we get killed, it's a good vlog. How are you gonna upload it if we're dead? We'll put it in my will. We should go here because I do not know how long those tunnels go down there. Yeah. Oh my god. Hello? Is there anyone there? Hello? Legend has it, within the narrow halls of Cheroho High School, there lives a creature. This creature is said to feast on the flesh of the students at the school. Sorry. It goes by one name, and one name only. The, the Boogeyman. Boogeyman. By Christian Sullivan. Sullivan. So, how'd you do on your pre-comp test? I did alright. I got like an 87. I think I got an 83. Nice. Dude, the funniest thing happened in my class. My friend Alex was reaching his, into his bag to grab a calculator, I think, uh -huh. and his bag of nuts spilled like all <laughs> over the floor. Yeah, we were, we were all laughing and... What was that? I'm glad it wasn't just me. Dude, let's get out of here. No, 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 come on. We're having fun. We're gonna go investigate. Dude, I don't know about this. What are we even doing? Why can't we just go home? We gotta find out what this is. Dude. I think it's that way. Dude, it's getting louder. Yeah, but I mean, we could go out the door. See, that's safety out there. <sighs> Fine. No, don't go in there. I know. <sighs> Fine. Yeah. Too bad the camera won't even see anything. The lighting in here is terrible. Hello? I don't know. Alright, let's, let's, let's try to scare it. Shh, shh, shh. Get low, get low, get low.
Oh, okay. no, 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 wait, no, no, we'll do, we'll go after three. Okay. Okay, do it. Get your flashlight out. What the? Hey. Why were you hiding from me? Maybe because the next film is called Hide and Seek. <laughs> in Madden Long and Adam Sherman's Hide and Seek, we see a game of Hide and Seek in the chorus room go terribly wrong. Do you want to go play hide and seek? Adam, that is a kid's game. Of course I want to play! Okay, okay, uh, you go hide and I'll stay here and count. Fine. Okay. To make it easy on you, I'll stay in this little arts part of the hallway. Promise? Of course. One, two, Eight, nine, ten. Not gonna say, radio not here, I come. Crap, I just said it. She's definitely in here. So Not in here? I thought this would be the first place she'd go. Huh. So I'll have to actually try. Maddie? Hey, Miss Burns, have you seen Maddie at all today? We said to stay in this hall. Oh, Maddie, Maddie, that's against the rules. You can't move while you're hiding. Come on. Dude, that's against the. Maddie? Oh my god, Maddie. Maddie, oh my god. Maddie, Maddie, are you okay? Are you okay? Wake up. Oh my god. Come here. Maddie, I have to go. I have to go. Yes. Maddie. 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 Ten four. Wow, two teens murdered in the middle of a school day. Someone must have really hated those two. In Stephen Osella and Trenton Laramie's I Am Happy, a massacre leaves behind a group of recordings. Now, you must solve the puzzle of what really happened. Ooh.
Good evening. Tragedy strikes us on Elm Street on House 13. During a birthday sleepover, an unknown assailant murdered everyone in the house. If you see this figure outside, please hide. Wait. Okay. Authorities are in a standoff with the... Oh, God. Turn off the camera. Bone to be chewed when the gales of November. 911, what's your emergency? I'd like to report a grave robbing. A grave robbing? Yeah, we saw no cars on the camera, but we saw some people trudging around. Uh, the graves look they were look they were uh, dug out from underneath. Plus, like, all the bodies are headless, so I don't know why people want to take them. Today marks the 10 year anniversary of the Elm Street Party Massacre. The body count possibly besides the two missing salvage workers. The Uncle Sebastian's therapist was found mangled in the basement of the now abandoned 13 Elm Street, which is also the site of a very bloody revolutionary war battle. Let's please all take a moment of silence to all those who have passed. hundred years, I'd wait a million more for you. Duck. Duck. Goo. For best horror goes to Hide and Seek by Maddie Lyne and Adam Sherman. Our final category of films we will be watching tonight is unscripted. This includes music videos, documentaries, or a general concept where the actors improvise. So, as the name suggests, any film without a script. Yep. Up next we have Dylan Blackburn's Simply Making Breakfast, which is seriously just Dylan Blackburn making breakfast.
find out about Cheroho's Robotics Team 2021 season in Robotics, the movie, directed by Matt Crossan. Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Crossan, I'm part of the Cheroho High School Robotics Club, and uh, I think you guys will enjoy it. It's basically uh, just a bunch of like a timeline of how it was built, like, it's gonna say, hope you enjoy the movie and have a nice day. Here is a short collection of the robot and how it was made. Here are the images. This is like a collection, it's like a, it's a, a short collection of images in, a, in it. And this is how the robot was developed. Before we end, here are some inter interviews with the club members. Hi, my name is Alex Nemorowski. Uh, around the robotics club, I, I mostly just build things. I'm not very good with computers or cameras, um, so I act mostly as an engineer. Uh, I ended up hearing about the robotics club over the school announcements, but I ended up joining it uh, because of uh, I had heard that my friend Logan was doing it, so I decided it would be a good way to have some fun uh, making things with my hands. That's something that I enjoy a lot. Um, robotics club has been a great experience. I love all the kids in it. It's been a uh, it's been a good good way to to make some new friends, uh, and hopefully as championship season, uh, season approaches, we can have some success there as well. Hi, my name is Logan Cleary. I'm known as you know the master builder of the club. Um, I've been doing it for like three years. Um, it was the first year of the club since it was rebuilt, and um, I joined because I love building stuff with my hands. Um, it's a great thing for people who want to get hands-on with it, whether they're good at building, coding, testing, writing for the journal. There's a lot of key components that are needed to uh, have a successful team. Hi, my name is Sadie Lowe. I have joined the robotics because I'm really interested in robot combat fighting. Like Battle Boss, Robot Wars, uh, Battle Robots, all the other shows like that. And if you're, I, I have a role, I help out with the robot and stuff, and if you're like interested in engineering and stuff, I suggest you to join here. Hello, I'm Dylan Fisher, I do the programming for the robot, and I actually learned about this robotics club in middle school because there was one in my middle school at that time, and then I heard about it from there. And I would recommend it to other people because it allows for you to like pursue your interests, some of your interests, and basically just have a lot of fun. Who are you? Well, Matt, I'm Mr. Bridgem, and I'm one of the deans at Chero High School, and I'm also the robotics coach and mentor. All right, Mr. Bridgem, how did you become the robotics teacher at Chero High School? Well, I hadn't really considered it, but then a friend of mine on the staff noticed that I was into building drones, you know, those flying machines. Yeah, yeah, I know flying machines. And they asked me if I'd be interested in um, helping to coach robotics, and I said, sure, I'll give it a try. Do you enjoy robotics? I do enjoy robotics. I like messing around with all the different parts and, you know, figuring out how to build them. And I like watching the kids do it even more. Yeah, you know, uh, and all the students are very friendly, right? Oh, the kids that we have are unbelievable. Um, they're very, very nice to each I, other. They listen to each other. I totally agree. I agree with that, you know. I'm glad this is a place where you can come and talk and make friends. Want to give us, give us an outro? An outro. Yeah, an outro. Oh, geez, Mr. B on the outro will catch you on the flip side. How about Mr. B? Uh, Mr. B has to. Uh, Mr. B has to catch some bees. I gotta go bee catching. All right.
16 castaways are stranded on an abandoned island for 39 days. Split into two tribes, contestants must compete against each other in challenges. Each day, they risk being voted out by their fellow contestants. In this film, we start on their 29th day on the island. Ten people have already been voted out, and the tribe has ten days left on the island. They have been merged into one single tribe, the Dubala tribe. Here's Survivor, Napa Tree Point, by Alex Silico and Christian Sullivan. voted off so soon. I know, it's so unfair. Last night in Tribal Council, Alex was voted off with every single vote. He won immunity almost every time, but then, of course, he didn't get it when he needed it the most. I mean, he was just so genuine and kind and friendly. Alex was a jerk. What? Guys, I got tree mail. What's it say? Today's reward is yours to keep so long as you're able to dig deep. Back and forth, you'll pour it out and one will walk away with clout. I think it's a digging challenge. I mean, it says digging. I mean, what? yeah, digging deep. Good morning, castaways. For today's reward challenge, you will have 10 minutes to dig a hole that is three feet deep and at least one foot wide. Want to know what you're playing for? Yeah! The winner will be taken to an exclusive ice cream spot on a nearby deserted island. Are you kidding me? Are you guys ready? I'm lactose yeah. intolerant! Are you ready? Yeah! Get set. Go! Abby using a different shred, using her bucket, everybody's following her. Frosty making quick work of this challenge. <laughs> Frosty is in the lead by a long shot, followed by Abby and Josh. I believe Abby has taken first place from Frosty. Sarah completely sinking in her hole. It looks like she's getting desperate. Regan's got kind of a dimple in the sand. Abby's in first, and I believe Josh has taken second place from Sarah. No, he's definitely not. Three, two, one. Everybody up, stop digging. Abby wins the award. Yeah! Woo! Welcome, guys. Today, you are going to partner up for this challenge. Each of you will reach in and grab a stone. Hold the stone in your hand and do not open it until I and do not look at it until I tell you to. Open. For today's immunity challenge, you will have five minutes to use a shovel and your hands with your partner to make the biggest sandcastle possible. Go! Regan abandoned her partner. I'm sorry. Abby and Josh, hang on to the lead. Abby and Regan are getting distracted by the cameraman. They're in third place. It will be judged on height and win. Ten seconds left. Collect it. Eight. Josh and Abby will be competing in a relay race. Oh, wait, is this like on to a to a point in back oh, to win race. immunity. Get set, go! Josh wins immunity! Josh, you will be safe from tonight's vote. Congratulations. Thank you. The rest of you, I got nothing for you. Head back to camp. Let's get to the vote. Maddie, you're up. I'll tell you the votes. Frosty. Second vote. Virginia. Abby. Frosty. Not this way. Freddy face. The 11th per person voted out of Survivor Napa Tree Point, Frosty. You guys went against me. You went, you went against me. We had an alliance to vote for Abby. 
The tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Well, that was an interesting tribal council. I hope you guys all learned something. Head back to camp. I hope I never see these people ever again. They cheat, they lie, they steal, especially lie. I'm not gonna miss anyone else. I can't wait to get out of here. Leave this pit. Freedom by Dylan Blackburn shows us the infinite things one can do in the mountains when skiing. In Sarah Frost's Good Bob vs. Bad Bob, Bob Ross teaches important life lessons on how to be a good person. Today we will be learning how good people act and bad people act with our favorite people, Good Bob, who was a good example for every girl and boy. And Bad Bob, who should be no example at all. Good Bob plays nice pranks on his friends. Oh wow, ten dollars! Bad Bob ah! is mean. Good Bob shares his snacks. While Bad Bob steals all of his. Good Bob shares his gifts. Bad Bob steals them. Good Bob wears his mask and is able to go outside with his friends. No mask equals time out. And death. Did you hear Bob Ross died? Died. The award for best unscripted film goes to Survivor Napa Tree Point by Alex Selico and Christian Sullivan. Congratulations. Before we continue on to our last awards of the night, we're going to give you all the opportunity to vote for your favorite film that you've seen here tonight. Type bit.ly slash audience choice 2021 case sensitive into your browser and vote for your favorite film. By the end of the festival, Maddie will comment who the winner is on the YouTube comments and will be posted on the Cinemates Instagram page at Chero Cinemates. And without further ado, let us continue on to the rest of our winners. Chargers, Mr. Mack here. Uh, first of all, I want to recognize the incredible growth in production quality, in performance, uh, in creativity, 
in the uh, film festival all over my tenure here at Cherry uh, I think we started one year after I came in as an assistant principal and uh, just amazed at the quality of the work um, of everyone who's participated in this over the years. Uh, but I'm here today uh, to present the award for uh, the best original film. And that award goes to The Boogeyman by Christian Sullivan. Congratulations, Christian. Well done. Uh, again, excited for all of the participants, humbled by your incredible ability uh, to create in the face of some really challenging uh, circumstances. Well done. The award for Best Cinematography goes to Toxic by Maddie Loin. The award for Best Concept goes to Workplace Madness, directed by Reagan Clark and Keeley Swain. The award for Best Actor goes to Sarah Frost for her performance in Survivor, Napa Tree Point, and The Boogeyman. Congratulations, Sarah. You guys went against me. You went, you went against me. We had an alliance to vote for Abby. I'm not gonna miss anyone else. I can't wait to get out of here. Leave this pit. Now I got you. Now I'm gonna eat you. We would like to recognize Matt Crossan for his documentary, Robotics the Movie. In his documentary, Matt recorded the experiences of Cherahoe High School's Robotics Club. Documentaries like these not only celebrate the great work of the students at Cherahoe, but they also capture what it's like to be a part of something really special. Congratulations, Matt. I am honored to present this year's Spirit of Film Award. The award goes to Caitlin Burns. Caitlin has been part of the Cherahoe Student Film Festival since she was in sixth grade. In addition to demonstrating great writing, directing, and editing skills, Caitlin also shows off her talent in comedic acting through her creative, funny, yet lighthearted films. She supports other filmmakers by acting in their films or by providing honest feedback so they can improve their work. Club president Maddie Loyne says that Caitlin is reliable and would help a friend in a and a film at any moment. Congratulations, Caitlin, and thank you for helping us keep the spirit of film alive. Thank you all so much for watching this tonight. Don't forget to check the comments of this YouTube video and the Cinemates Instagram page to find out the winner of the Audience Choice Award. Right. Goodbye, everyone, and have a great night.